Quakers lead by one with the ball. Wall goes through and no one follows him, so it's the ball defense. Now Wall breaks the seams of the zone and connects 52 to 49. Wall has 16. And there's the longest lead for Pennsylvania. Three points. Porter having very, very difficult time shedding number 40, Jimmy Wolf. They pick and roll to Chris Ford. He misses it, but Porter stuffs it back in a hole. One it's of the few times tonight that Ford has managed to lose Dave Wolf. 52 to 51. Quakers by one with the ball. 12 minutes, 24 seconds left. Bilski drops it off to Calhoun. Steve had a shot. Bilski off the fake. And Dave Wall is fouled by Chris Ford, number four. Go to a press and try and take advantage of it. 53-51, 10 by two. And Dave Wall with 17 points as McDowell is in and Ford is out. 12-02 remaining in the ball game. And for most of this contest, it was Villanova on top by as many as eight at one point. It is now pinned by two by three, 54-51. Just token pressure at the moment as Inglesby brings it up. McDowell plays high post. Porter. Porter trying to get rid of Jimmy Wolf and can't do it. Inglesby rubs Pilsky off and Wolf picks him up on a switch. At Smith outside. He takes Bobby Morse inside, tries to, but loses the handle. Well, you just saw as good an example of man-to-man -man defense as uh, you're ever going to see. Bobby Morse. A little strong this time, and a rebound comes to McDowell. And has not had to go to its bench yet here in the second half. Schmidt and Morse. Wolf on Porter. Calhoun on Simontowski. Bilski on Inglesby. That's what you're watching right there. Porter over Jimmy Wolf. No. Follow shot is not there as Bobby Morse cleans the board. Timeout's being called by Penn before the shot. Timeout. You've got 10.56 remaining in the second half. So there's the answer right there. Defense. Exactly right. Those man-to-man -man matchups have been outstanding for Pennsylvania. Dave Wold. Bobby Morse guarded by Semitowski. It's man-to-man. -man. Yes, it is. Calhoun gets position on Smith, and Smith makes the play. Calhoun gets it back, fires over his head. An amazing shot. An amazing shot by Calhoun. Well, I think, he's a, I think he's an amazing basketball player. I don't really believe the people in Philadelphia know yet what Corky Calhoun can do. 56 to 51 on that one. Anglesby answers, it's 56 to 53. That's gotta go down as the shot of the season, doesn't it? It was something to see. Dave Wall and Inglesby fouled him as he got a step on him. WPHL TV, Channel 17, 77 76, and you couldn't get much tighter than that. And here's one. At the moment, it's 57 53 pen, but there's still 10 03 left on that clock, and a long way to go. As you look at the two benches, Harder on your left, Kraft on your right. So the Cats have gone to a man-to-man. -man. They set a screen for Porter, but he can't do it. And thus far, they have not been able to take advantage of any mismatches. Well, they thought this would be one, maybe. Inglesby with Bilski. There's Porter trying to find some room. Does. Misfires. It's Inglesby. 18-footer. No. And Calhoun with a rebound. Bobby Moore. 59-53, and there is the biggest lead of the night for the Quaker. Six points. Morse with 14. 
And as you look at the clock, you start to think what I'm sure everyone else is thinking, Charlie. If Penn has any kind of a lead, they can freeze that ball as well as anybody. A great follow shot by Clarence Smith makes it 59 to 55 with 8.59 left in the game. Bilski in a foot race with McDowell. He might have been fouled up somewhere at the top of the key, and that's what the call's going to be. Steve Bilski, an 80% free throw shooter throughout his collegiate career. Makes it 60 to 55. Steve has scored but one point this half. He's got nine for the game. That, by the way, is the fourth team foul against the Wildcats. Both teams now have four. And it's now that we're going to find out what Villanova's made out of Al because Penn behind by eight did not lose its poise or its confidence. Kept playing its game. They screened for this one by Porter. He can't get it through. So Smith lets ride. It doesn't go in. And Bobby Morse comes away with the ball. Here's Dave Wall. Bobby Morse is tripped, and it's going to be a foul call on Clarence Smith. This is his best game since that tournament. No two ways about it. I would think so. 61 to 56. The Quakers on top. Now they're going to put a little pressure in the backcourt here. As Ingles becomes over the line, guarded by Dave Wall. It's a man-to-man -man defense. It's McDowell who's in there for Ford. McDowell takes Bilski in the hole. He's short of the mark. The rebound by Calhoun. And now the Quakers own the backboard in this half. Checking out beautifully. Eight minutes coming up. 61 to 55. They've isolated Morse on Semitowski. What a move! 63 to 55. Bobby Morse with 17. And Chris Ford going to report in at the next opportunity. Offensive foul on Clarence Smith. Story right there. And you know what they can do with that basketball when they've got a lead. They can sit on it just as well as anybody I've ever seen. Now they can be deliberate, do whatever they want. Bilski almost penetrating, changes his mind. Wall, and here's the man-to-man -man defense. He's got Inglesby on him. And he may have lost it. No, it's off Inglesby. He was screened away. Well, if you look for turning points in a basketball game that is not over yet, just check as Bilski makes his way in, and he's fouled by McDowell. It's going to cost him two shots. I can say at the top of this half, Villanova opened up a fast eight-point lead. The Quakers never lost their poise, eventually gained the lead. Here sitting on a 64-55 lead, and now it's up to the Wildcats to see if they can't come back. 65-55, your longest lead of the night by either team, 10 points, and the Quakers have it with seven minutes, seven minutes to go. So if Villanova is to make a move, it must happen now. And that's Porter at 15 feet. It doesn't go in. Ford's back in the ball game. Smith gets one. It comes out on him. A rebound. Knocked out of bounds by Calhoun. <laughs> Refs are conversing. We saw it, Calhoun, but I guess that's the way it's going to be. Al Grossman and Steve Hanzo doing another beautiful job of officiating a big game in the Big Five. Yeah, you, they're two of the best. You just saw a reason why. They're, they're a good team. Porter, who has problems going to the hoop with that ball in his hand. And Inglesby goes and is fouled by Wald. He'll get two shots. Forget that Jim Wolf has played Howard Porter and played him very tough. Inglesby gets one more. Oh, yes. Howard has taken a dozen shots tonight. He scored five field goals. 65 to 56. Six and a half minutes left. Man to man defense. Ben can't give to Bilski be, uh, too much room. He can shoot from outside as well. They appear to be almost ready to start spreading it out a bit, Al, yep. even though there's a lot of time left. Of course, it's a bonus situation any time a foul is committed now. Wall and Bilski doing the job at the moment. 
sitting on the basketball. He might put it in a deep freeze with 5.58 on the clock. And there's a foul. McDowell is going to be one and one for Steve Bilski. Frustration leaned over his back and fouled him. And now you're starting to see the replay of an old familiar tune here at the University of Pennsylvania Palestra. And that's the Quakers Bilski or Wall on the line late in the game trying to fatten the lead at 66 to 56 with less than six minutes to go. Porter wants the ball and Wolf came over the top and fouled him. Picked up eight boards in the process. Porter connects to make it 66 to 57 with 540 showing. They sneak Calhoun inside. Corky with a blind shot this time. No, and Porter grabs the rebound. The last time Corky tried something like that, it went in the hole. That's Inglesby off of his move. Short of the mark. Zemantowski stuffs it back in. It's 66 to 59. That is the first two points of the half by Zemantowski, who had 13 in the first 20 minutes. At that time, Hank was a five for nine ball player. Bilski making it on McDowell, but doesn't take it in. Calhoun has pretty much put the clamps on him in this second half. All right, this is Wall, and it's up to Inglesby now as he's just going to sit on that basketball and are going to lull him into a little bit of a false sense of security and try to get the easy shot. Now Porter comes out to help. Almost on the line. That's Little Page in there. And that's what they are definitely doing now. They're letting the air out of the basketball. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons you saw the substitution made, a Little Page for Wolf. Craig is a better ball handler. They double up on Bilski. Bilski gets through the whole game. And now there's 426 left in the game. Well, Al Williams in game one, Steve Bilski in game two. That's Dave Wolf sandwiched in, and Calhoun has it. They're going to put it away if they can with the stall. McDowell got a hand on it and knocked it out of bounds. So with something less than six minutes to go, Penn decided to sit on it a little bit. Go for nothing but the good shot. There's a foul here on Tom Ingalls. Has done it as he has done it so often his three years and this kid just got to play professional basketball for somebody. That's all. 67 to 59. Timeout being called by Villanova. He likes to play. The Wildcats have the ball, but they trail. 67 to 59. Pennsylvania, on the other hand, survived, even though Bob Morse had to sit down for a while. That is a rebound by Craig Littlepage off a couple of misses in tight, and Steve Bilski has the basketball. Quakers trying for 15 and 0 on the year. The Cats came in 14 and 3. Bilski, there it is. 69 to 59, and with 327 remaining, it's going to be an uphill fight for the Wildcats. That's Ford to the basket. Follow, no. Rebound, Bobby Morse. Whistle, foul, Zemantowski. It'll be one. As poised, as calm, and collected a basketball team as you're ever going to see. A 70-59 game, and the Quakers with 3.16 to go. Looking good. It's 18 points for Bobby Morse. Remember now, Bobby set out a lot of that first half with three personal fouls. 71 to 59. He's got 15 of his points in the second half. They get Smith in tight. He feeds Semitowski. 71 to 61 with 3.03. Of course, the Quakers will sit on that basketball, but make no mistake about it. As Bilski indicated last time, if you want to hang around, they'll just drive right up the middle. Steve Bilski out of Roslyn, New York. 
And you're getting an idea now why Jack McKinney is going to be so glad to see those two guys graduate for their murder. Yeah, he can't say enough about them. That's broken loose by Inglesby. And Smith did not know Inglesby was there for the pass. Semantowski, no, followed by Porter is good, and it's 71 to 63 with two minutes and 14 seconds remaining. Now the turnovers in the game, each team has been guilty of only two in this half and eight for the entire game. That gives you an indication how well it's been played. Yeah, that's tremendous. It's going to be a foul on Semantowski. There's a heck of a quarterback. 72 to 63, and Wool has hit 21 points in the game of the year. And 22, and it's back to 10 points, and there's two minutes and one second showing. Inglesby misses. So does Porter. It is Quaker ball. Some of the fans are starting to leave now, figuring the Quakers with a minute 51 remaining, sitting at a 10 point. Villanova could not take advantage and sustain. Full court to Bilski. Good. And a foul. And Smith is hurt. I sincerely hope not badly. Uh, he made just a super effort to head Bilski off at the pass. Highly favored Villanova, 32 to 30. Last year, the Quakers convincingly knocked off Penn, 59 to 55. It's somewhat similar a ball game in which they sat on it, had it pretty much a control in the late going. It's 76-63. Quakers have the basketball with a minute 39. And I think the drama has pretty much ended here at the Palestra. The Quakers, number four in the country coming into tonight, just might move up a notch or two after this one. Taken away by Semantowski to goal. To Inglesby. Open is four, challenges Morse, and Morse beats him, and that's kind of been the story of the game tonight. Not only that, Morse takes the rebound. It's been Bobby Morse in the second half with 15 points, a mess of rebounds, and a great defensive job. Ray Carter just kept rotating four or five ball players in there to get himself some kind of a combination. Semantowski, and that's the story. They play volleyball, and I think it's Semantowski's basket. It's Howard Porter's basket, but it's academic. It's 76-66 with less than a minute to go. Morse is open. Follow shot, no, no, by Little Page. And this is Ford. Inglesby, he's short of the mark. This is Porter. He connects, but it may be a little bit too late for the middle of the Wildcats because there's only 33 seconds left. And it's 76 to 68. Great Paul Arizon with that basket right there. Porter has 20 on the night, by the way. And Jim Haney is up off the pen bench. He's going to come in for one of these two guards. And whichever one it is, you're going to hear some kind of a roar. It'll be Wall probably because Bilski's at the line. That's going to be the call. There goes Dave Wall. Boy, what a ball game he played. So for Dave Wall, tonight he scored 22 points. It's 77-68 with 30 seconds remaining. 78-68. Little Steve Bilski's put on an exhibition. He's got 19 points. And he'll be out in a minute because uh, Walters is about to come in. Sementowski. Rebound to Calhoun. Whistle. 40 wins. They have lost but two thus far. Ford makes it. It's one and one. He gets another. It's 78 to 69 with 21 seconds remaining. And the word defense will become very big after the game tonight in conversations about the game. Well, you certainly can't talk about this ball game without talking about defense. It's a great key to Pennsylvania's success. Billy Walters under pressure. Porter knocks it out of bounds. There's 19 seconds remaining and a 78 to 70 win for the Quakers in the game. Still retained by the Quakers as Porter got a hand on it. With little page. Walters, nine seconds. Jimmy Wolf. Five, four. Little page fires it up. And there it is. The end of the game. That's 
Pennsylvania 78, Villanova 70. And let's catch a little bit of this action before we break away from the commercial message. They're going to take the net down, maybe. Yep, yep. They've decided they're, uh, this is the Big Five championship that was won tonight. So they can take the nets down as across the way a dejected band of Wildcats slowly files out toward the dressing room. You're looking at a very happy young guy up there cutting that net down. That is Jim Haney. Who, but for an injury to his knee prior to his first.